they don't contradict each other. So the truth of God unfolds, um, but it never changes. So the truth of God unfolds. He unfolds his truth through history. We can read about the history in this before here. We can look at history in the natural, and we can see God unfolding truth to us that way. He also unfolds it individually as we walk and grow in Christ, in our understanding, in our spiritual maturity. So the truth of God may unfold, but it never changes. It never changes. So. In these passages um, that we are looking at, Paul is stating God reveals the mystery of his will in Christ, the formation of his body, the body of Christ, the church redeemed by Jesus, and this is a part of the mystery that he reveals, the gathering together or the bringing into unity all of creation, heaven, and earth under the Lordship of Jesus Christ is done. Look at verses 10. I'm going to read that again. Back in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10. Paul, can you read that? Do you have that up on your app? Yeah, that in dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together one and all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth. Him. Okay. And um, if, um, Gary, have you read yet? No? No. All right. Gary, would you um, jump down and read verses 22 through 23? And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him. Who fills everything in every way. Okay. So we got um, in the fullness of time, he gathers to he's gonna gather together that he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both in heaven and or and on earth, even in him, in Christ. And then verses 22 and 23. They underscore that opening, that mystery of the revelation of what God is doing, what his purpose is. And God has put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. So it's talking about Jesus there, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So we see the unfoldment of God's truth, his mystery. From the foundation of the world was to to gather together a church, a bride for His Son, that would that would bring together all of creation back to what He designed us to do, back to the fulfillment of what He originally designed in the garden, where we would reflect His image, the image of God in, in the pure sense of reflecting that image and all of creation in unity again under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So all those in Christ, we know God's purpose because he's opened it up to us. He's revealed the history to us, his church. That's who he reveals it to, his people. So we know this because he's opened it to us by his Holy Spirit. When you are um, born again, when you've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit take up, takes up residence in your heart, and um, he confirms that word. You have understanding. So then he opens it up to us by his Spirit. When we receive redemption through Jesus and are placed in the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit, and we also know it and accept it um, by the word of faith and by our experience as we um, are regenerated by the Holy Spirit. So we also know it by his word that we learn, that we hide in our hearts, um, that we grow in and study. So we know it by the Bible, we know it by the Spirit. So that's how he reveals the mystery, through his word and by his Spirit. So God brings special revelation to those who are his people. 
Remember, he's talking to those who are his own. He's talking to the saints, to the saints and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, to those who are um, redeemed by Jesus Christ. Remember, faithful doesn't mean that we're faithful. To him, it means that we have accepted by faith what he has done for us and has placed us in his life. So God brings that special revelation to us, his children. Okay, I'm going to read some passages now. Um, Paul, could you go to Deuteronomy 29, 29? I'll get you to read that, and I'm going to set it up for you. All right, here we have in the Old Testament, God is um, speaking to his people through Moses, his servant. And Moses is talking to the people about what God has done, how he's driven out enemies from the land, and how certain things are going to start to come to pass in the lives of the children of Israel, how they are even going to go astray. And he's going to have to deal harshly with them to bring them back again. So God is telling them all of these things about what has happened, what is happening right then, and what is going to happen. So right in the middle of him unfolding all of that history and um, prophecy for his children, he speaks this verse. So read this verse. So Deuteronomy 29, 29. The sacred things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Wow. So right in the middle of that, unfolding of his truth for the nation of Israel, his people, the Bible tells us that the secret things belong to the Lord, but what he reveals belongs to us. So what happens when something belongs to us? When we own, when we take charge of something and it belongs to us, what is, what is our responsibility then to that? Well, we can use it. Hopefully to our benefit, share it. Okay. Do you feel a responsibility to share God's word? And, yeah. I say take care of it. Manage it. Yeah. Steward it. So if it belongs to us and to our children, and that, that's a wonderful heritage. Pass it on. Pass it on. But we're, respon we're responsible somehow for it, don't we? Yes. It becomes a responsibility, but it's also a blessing. Yeah. It's a blessing. Yeah. When God opens up his word and reveals things to us, it's a responsibility, yes, but it's also a blessing. A blessing. Turn over to John 15, 15. I want you to look at what Jesus says to his disciples. Now get in your mind of what's going on in this chapter. He is, they are, they had been in the Passover, okay? So he has um, talked to them about the Passover, about commemorating his death with the cup that he's got. He's wrapped his cup with a towel and he got down and he washed their feet. So this whole scene is unfolding before he's crucified for them. And he begins in um, chapter 15 of John, and he starts telling them about, you stay close to that. I'm the vine. You're the branches. If you stay in me, you're going you're to yield the fruit. You're going to grow in your life. Um, and, the, and you're going to bring God glory, but stay close to me. And then um, this is as he's going to the Garden of Gethsemane. He's teaching them about the vine and the branches. And then right at the end of this, and John 15, 15, look what he says to them. Um, Ophelia, could you read that nice and loud? I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. We have such a responsibility because God is revealing his truth to us. But now, you know, we're not servants. Right. We're in an intimate circle with the creator of the universe. And he calls us his friends, just like he did Abraham, just like he did Moses. We 
are in with God. Isn't that something? That is, oh, that is the best, me and God, that's the best combination in the world. In the world. So he brings in that intimacy as he reveals his truths, his revelation, his secrets to us. He unfolds to us the truth. Look at Matthew 13, 11. Here he's teaching all the people in parables. And um, in, the, in the parables, he's talking about the sower and the seed, different parables about the kingdom of heaven. And um, his disciples say, ask him, what are you teaching the crowds in parables? And um, look what he responds to them. In Matthew 13, 11. Debbie, could you read that nice and loud? Matthew 13, 11. This is why he taught the crowds and parables, but he gathered his disciples close to him and he told them what those parables meant. He replied, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. When you are in Christ Jesus, the kingdom of heaven is yours. It's open to you. You've been given an open door to know what God is doing, to understand what his will and purpose is, to, to have him impart eternal truth to your soul and to your mind, to open up your understanding and your wisdom. And he says, I can tell everybody else terrible. They're going to have to go home and think about it and search it out and may never even come to know the truth until they know me, the way, the truth, and the life. And But you have come to know me as the truth, and I open up my truth to you. And so I'm thankful for that, aren't you? He calls us his friends, and he reveals his secrets to us because we belong to him. And we are his church. We are his church. And I'm thankful, thankful, thankful for that. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right, let's read. Um, let's read Matthew 16. Who needs to read that? Gary? <laughs> Gary's going to read for us. Matthew 16. And um, we are his church. Matthew 16, read verses 13 through 18. I'm kind of shifting gears here. Okay. And we're going to look at something else about God that you learned from this time. Mm -hmm. When Jesus came to the region of Sierra Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do the people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah, still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For this was not revealed to you by man, but by the Father in heaven. And I tell you that, that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Amen. Amen. So Peter said to Jesus, or Jesus says, who do you say that I am? Peter said, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus says, you, know, you didn't come up with this on your own, Peter. No, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, revealed it to you. He's unveiled that secret yeah. to you because you are my uh, disciple. So he says, then he does a little play on words. He says, you are Peter, and upon this rock, I'll build my church. Peter is little rock. That word he translated rock, upon this rock, I'll build my church. It's like a foundational boulder. It is huge. So um, Bible scholars believe that when he says, upon this rock I'll build my church, it is not upon Peter, right. as some would believe, right. yeah. but it is upon the statement Peter made, right. that proclamation right. that Jesus Christ right. is the Christ, the yeah. Son 
of the living God. That is the rock of truth upon which the church is built. And that is the foundational truth that God began to unfold at the very creation of the world. He is a master. And while I was meditating on that today, I was overcome. I was just overcome with him and just the beauty and the perfection and just the um, what he doesn't know. He doesn't know nothing. I mean, that's a double negative thing. Hey, there's nothing he does not know. There's nothing God does not know. If you take the greatest expert who ever lived, if you take the greatest genius the world has ever known, it was God who developed yeah. that, you know, yeah. and that is only a smidge of what God contains within himself. So you think about all that God knows, the he's the master of it all, the master over all of it, physics, science, everything that there is. So he is an architectural designer. He is a builder. He is a master gardener. He uh, is he is it. He is everything. All yes. in all. So I looked up and I said, well, what's the biggest building the world could know? And the, I found it. This is the largest building in the world. I don't know if y'all can see it there, but I'm going to pass it around. It's in Dubai. It's in Dubai. And it is the largest building in the world. It's it costs a bit over a billion dollars to build. I said billion. And uh, it is a skyscraper. Now you think about all the engineering. So it's an office? It's a, it's just a skyscraper. Offices, different offices. And it's, it's over a half a mile tall. Oh my gosh. So when when um, a master builder builds something they start with a blueprint right and can you imagine for that large building the blueprints and the every little detail that had to go into all of that just to build this lowly building that's mm -hmm. just a half a mile tall so you think about all the electric detail all the plumbing all the structural um whatever needs to go in there to make sure the wind doesn't blow it over all the engineering and physics and all of this that goes into just this building this right here is just a little blueprint for a couple of levels on a parking garage and you can see it's pretty complex to me yeah and that's just a parking garage so can you imagine all the engineering and everything that went into this project here well, God is building something eternal. He's building something eternal through Jesus Christ. And he started building it way back at the beginning, at the foundation of the world. And he's um, building it and unfolding it through time. Look at verse 10. Again, back in Ephesians, verse 10. He does it over time. Notice in verse 10, when he says, in the dispensation of the fullness of times, what does the NIV say? Uh, he put into effect when the times have reached their fulfillment. Okay, and then the NIV, it says, when the times have reached their fulfillment. Mm -hmm. So do you get that? That's, that's plural, isn't it? Right. So it's not just one time. It's when the times reach their fulfillment. So over time, God is structuring, structuring and building and laying the blueprints and the plans for his eternity with us, for his eternity with us. It's a plan for eternity. And you know what? God's plans are good. They're good plans because he is good. He's good to us. He is a good God. His plans are good. They're wise. And they're well structured, all of his plans. And his plans involve you and me. That's so exciting. Isn't that exciting? So we're going to stop right there. And I'm going to have y'all come back next week while we continue with Ephesians, the riches of his grace, as we talk about the riches 
of revelation that he's given to us. And we look at the mystery that he's revealed over time. I want y'all to read for next week, um, chapter three. We're jumping over to chapter three, verses one through 12. So y'all study those for the week, look at those and read over those. And we'll talk about it next week. I want to close with um, two verses. If you bear with me, I'll just read these couple of passages. The first is in Isaiah. If you want to write it down or turn there. It's Isaiah chapter 28. And I want you to look at verse 16. And think about time and think about structure. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a pride stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation that believeth, he that believeth shall make, shall not make haste. He that believeth shall not make haste. Turn back over to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. And what is the exceeding greatness of his appointment? That's one. Chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners. He's talking about us there. But fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Wow. Esther Builder has planned this. I'm so thankful for it. Let's close in a word of prayer tonight. Um, Paul, would you close us out in a word of prayer? Father God, we thank you for this night. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for the way Ears to hear and I have to see the truth, Father God. We speak that of ourselves right now. Father God, we thank you that you give us opportunity to be your light to a dark world. Father God, that you your word is going to overcome all, Father God. We thank you, Father, right now that you give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of your word. Father, we ask you as we're praying, dear Lord Jesus, just to quicken this into our spirit and let us act this out in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, we thank you for this time. Amen. 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 Well, let's we'll see y'all next week. Thank you for being here. Try to come in person in April. Yeah. And invite a friend to join us. That's right. We love you guys. Bye. 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 Feel free to contact Bye. me anytime if you have a need or anything. Okay. Okay. I'll okay. Reach out. Love y'all guys. Bye-bye. Now you here? Yeah. <laughs>